and it's Dr. Sarah Sadek. An overbite is a very common problem. You may be wondering if your overbite is good, is it bad? Should you get it treated? I'll be answering all of these questions, including the causes of an overjet, the best treatments and solutions, how long treatments take, and what can be done if one of these treatments isn't successful. Commonly, the word overbite is actually misused by the public, often interchangeably with overjet. However, there is a subtle difference, which I'll briefly discuss. Overbite is in fact the vertical overlap of the top and bottom teeth. And we do want teeth to overlap slightly, as if they weren't overlapping, as shown here, then you can increase your chances of tooth wear. While overjet is the protrusion of the top teeth relative to the lower teeth, and people will often mistakenly call this an overbite also, but it's actually an overjet. A reverse overjet, which is more common in some populations, is where the lower jaw sticks forward relative to the top, and typically this is actually more difficult to correct. If you're new to this channel and you haven't already subscribed, well, why not? Please do hit that subscribe button and then also hit the notifications to get access to this ever-growing treasure trove of all things brace and teeth related. Now, the number one cause of an overjet is genetics passed on from your parents, your grandparents, and your great-great-grandparents. Within this genetics category, there are two reasons for having an overjet. The first is that the upper jaw is too developed relative to the lower jaw. However, this is actually really uncommon. Usually, it's because the lower jaw is underdeveloped, and typically you can see this if you look at some people from the side and you have a look at their side profiles and you'll notice that the lower jaw is slightly set back and they'll have a slightly convex facial profile. Another reason may be due to thumb sucking or using a dummy for a long time, which can cause the teeth to stick forwards. And sometimes teeth just grow sticking forwards, unfortunately. So what is the best way to correct this? Well, years ago, headgear was a very common solution, but nowadays we have better alternatives that we can use. Orthodontists use appliances that encourage the lower jaw to grow. Now, it's hard to make the lower jaw grow more than it would genetically, but if we time things correctly, we can guide teeth and remodel bone to help maximize that growth potential. So when is the best time to correct an overbite or an overjet. Best time to correct this problem is just before the growth spurt in boys and girls. So this is between the ages of 10 and 13. This is when we're most likely to get the jaw to grow favorably. So how can we correct this problem? One way we can correct this is by using elastics. They connect the top and lower brace to apply pressure and push and pull the jaws into their correct positions. And elastics work brilliantly in cases that aren't too severe. Other appliances used in more severe cases include a twin block appliance. And this is a removable brace, most popular in the UK. It's made from separate upper and lower parts, which interlock, placing the lower jaw into a more advanced position. Another is the Herbst appliance, which is fixed onto teeth on the inside of the mouth and it applies pressure to push the jaw forwards. Now this has an advantage over elastics or the twin block in that it's actually fixed in place. So how long do these treatments take? Well, this phase of treatment of growing a jaw normally takes between nine to 12 months. You may be asking, will the brace change the shape of my face? Well, this is actually a much debated topic. However, it appears that these braces mainly tip teeth into their correct positions to compensate for the underlying jaw discrepancies. And research suggests, whilst there may be some short-term jaw growth alteration, the length and position of the lower jaw is really governed by our genetic makeup. So there are unlikely to be any major changes to your jaw position or shape. Is the treatment always successful? These treatments aren't always successful, and it's really difficult to predict who will respond well to jaw growth treatments. What can be done if the treatment isn't successful? If these treatments aren't successful, then extractions or maybe even jaw surgery may be considered. 
Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please do hit that subscribe button and the notifications button. And I'll see you again soon for loads more videos all about teeth and braces. Thank you, bye-bye.